against all the evil that hell can conjure, all the wickedness that mankind can produce, we will send unto them only you. Rip and tear until it is done. If you haven't been living under a rock, you probably played or at least heard about the Doom games. Both Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal sold very well, were loved by the fans and were critically acclaimed. But I'm not gonna talk about them in this video. Instead, I want to hop in a time machine and take you back to a game that started the entire franchise. Welcome to the 90s. I'm pretty sure your parents told you that everything was better in the 90s. The haircuts, the fashion, and especially the computers. I mean, look at this thing. It's objectively better than what we have right now. If you want to beat someone to death with it. All jokes aside, the 90s were a revolutionary decade for gaming. And Doom is one of a few examples of how a single game can define an entire genre. The first Doom came out in 1993, but I got my hands on it in 1999, when I was 7 years old. And honestly, I was scared shitless to play this game. And for a good reason, just take a look at this moment. I can handle it quickly now. But when you are a kid, and you are not expecting this at all, you can imagine that this shit gets pretty scary. But there was one thing that I hated even more than that for some reason, and it was seeing the face of a doom guy get smashed in gradually as you receive more and more damage from the demons. Now, this is a very small detail that you can completely miss if you don't pay attention. But I think what it does well is it creates a connection between the player and the character so you really feel when you get hurt or when something happens to your character in the game. Combine that with the fact that I haven't seen this idea used in any modern games made me really want to recreate it in Unity and give it to you, so you can take it and adapt it to your own games. So let's hop into Unity and see how it works. As you can see I took the sprites from the original game and recreated the UI, a couple of enemies and a bit of the environment. Pay attention to the status phase. When you are idle, it's gonna look around randomly. When you get close to an enemy and you start to get hurt, it's gonna show the pain animation. And as your health goes down more and more, the face is going to become bloodier and all the animations are going to adapt accordingly. Okay, that's the general idea. If you don't need a more in-depth explanation, you can go to the link in the description and grab the project on GitHub. To all the rest of you who decided to stick around, let me give you a brief explanation to show you how it all works. So the main object in this entire system is the game events object. As you can see, this script is a singleton. In fact, it's the only singleton that I have in the entire project. But the most important thing here are these two reactive variables that I made using the UniRx library. If you don't know what this means yet, that's okay. Let's say for example that the health reactive property changes, right, when the player is being damaged. Now the great part is that we can have other scripts observe this value and do certain stuff only when this value is being changed. In other words, this creates a pseudo observer pattern, but it has a lot more advantages, which I'm gonna show off in a second. Let's take a look at an object that uses this kind of logic. I'm talking about the blood overlay. It's just a simple red UI image that has a canvas group on it, so I can increase and decrease the alpha to make it look like the screen is flashing red every time you get hurt. Let's open up the script on this object and see how it works. First of all, you're gonna see a canvas group reference. Then I have an eye enumerator that increases the canvas group alpha to 1, waits 0.1 seconds, then decreases it back to 0. I also have a float variable called old health, which I basically use to check if the current health is smaller than it used to be. If it is, then it means the player has been damaged and we need to flash the red screen. Now, the most important part. Every time I enable this object, I start the subscribe coroutine. And what subscribe does, it simply waits until the game event singleton is created. Then it subscribes to the health reactive property inside it. I need to mention that this entire syntax is enabled by UniRx. 
This code will not work without it. The parameter called value will contain the value of the variable to which we are subscribing to, which in this case is the health of the player. And this is helpful because you don't have to use a reference every time you check this value. Anyway, as I was mentioning previously, we need to check if the old health is bigger than the current health. If it is, it means that the player was hurt. Next, we will start the flash red eye enumerator, which I showed you previously. But you probably noticed that before that I'm checking if this coroutine is currently running just to make sure that we don't have multiple coroutines running simultaneously. And lastly, I'm updating the old health value to be equal to the current health value. So this is how we subscribe when we enable the object. But at the same time, you need to clear the subscriptions every time you disable the object. You probably noticed that at the end of our subscription syntax, we added this line that says add two subscriptions. In this case, subscriptions is a variable of type composite disposable, which is a class from UniRx. And like a C-sharp dictionary, it allows you to dynamically add stuff to it and clear it when you no longer need the content. Which is exactly what we're gonna do in Disable. If you don't do this and the object gets disabled, then you're gonna get exceptions, such as this one. Alright, I wanted to explain this script line by line so you understand how UniRx works. If you feel like you need a more detailed explanation, just let me know, I can make a separate video on that. But for now, let's go back to Unity and cover the rest of the code quickly. As you can see, the player is a simple cylinder with the camera attached to it. And it has three scripts. The first one is player health. It's a very short script and it's responsible only for tracking and changing the health of the player. The second script is player mover. Can you guess what this one does? And the third and final one is player sounds. This one observes the player health and plays the sound of the player getting hurt or dying, depending on the health value. So that's basically it for the player scripts. Let's move on to the enemy behavior. I've added three types of enemies, a zombie man, an imp and a pinky demon. All of them have a different value for the range, damage, attack cooldown, as well as a unique attack sound. Now let's open up the enemy controller script and see what it does. First of all, it rotates the enemy on the y-axis so that the enemy is always facing the player. And secondly, it checks if the player is inside enemy range. If he is, the player is going to take damage and the attack sound will be played. So that's basically it for the enemy behavior. Now let's move on to the most important part, the status bar and the doom guy's face. The status bar has an image that I took straight out of the original Doom, and it has two children, the status face and the health. The status face is a separate image because I want to change it independently, and the health is just a simple text object. Status face is the script that controls both of them. As you can see, it has a reference to the health object and to the status face object. It also has an array of sprites, which contains all the possible variations of a Doom guy's face. I was able to find this image online. I removed the background, then I separated all the faces into separate sprites. Take a look at this face, for example. It has the name look forward underscore 100. Look forward is the action and 100 represents the health value. Now take a look at the face right underneath it. It has the same action, but now the health value is 75 and the face is a bit more bloody. If you take a look at the sprites below, you're gonna see that they all follow the same structure. The only exception being the death face and the god mode face, which doesn't have a health value for obvious reasons. All the rest of the faces will be named according to this rule. First of all the action name, then the health value. Now, let's open up the script and see how this works. First of all, I want you to pay attention that the script is subscribed to the health reactive property from game events. Which means that every time the player health changes, the script is going to execute the health change method. The logic here is simple. First of all, we check if the health value is zero or less. We select the dead sprite and we place it on the player face. If the player has more than zero health, then we need to determine how much damage he's taken. If the damage value is smaller than 20, we just use the regular damage face. And if it's bigger than 20, then we set the shocked face. After that, we just update the old health and the health text to match the current health value. One thing that I still didn't explain though is how the set face and get damage status method works. So let's come back to that. The set face method takes in a string and then it goes through the entire array of face sprites, finds the sprite with the exact name and sets it on the player face image. 
After that, we need to make sure that the face timer is equal to 1, which means that this face will be shown for 1 second before the Doom Guy's face goes back to the idle state, which is just looking around. Now let's take a look at the get damage status method. This one also takes in the player's health, and depending on that health, it returns a string that contains an underscore and a number. That number is determined by 5 intervals. First one, if the health is bigger or equal to 80, we return underscore 100. If the health is smaller than 80, but bigger or equal to 60, we return underscore 75, and so on. You need to make sure that the numbers that you return here are exactly the same as the numbers that you have in the name of the sprites, otherwise this will not work. Now, let's analyze an example so you understand how this works in the game. When you press play, you are gonna have an initial health value of 100. The zombie man will do exactly 10 damage. Now we have 90 health. Let's pause the game and see how the code works. You already know that every time the player gets damaged, we are running the health change method. In this case, the input value is 90, and the damage that we took is equal to 10, which means that we are going to set the damage phase, not the shock one. Then we get to the get damage status method, which will also take in 90. Now, take a look at all the intervals, and you'll see that 90 fits into the first one, which means that get damage status is going to return underscore 100. And when you combine damage with it, you're gonna see that we are looking for a sprite called damage underscore 100, which is exactly this one. Now, let's let the player get damaged gradually until the health reaches zero. Doomguy's face is going to change as 70 health, 50 health, 30 health, 10 health and finally 0 when he's dead. So this all works properly. Now let me show you how to expand the system if you want to add new events and new faces to it. Let's say for example we want to add the Doom Guy's maniac face that he does when he picks up a new weapon. First thing that I would do is I would go to the game event script and add the new bool reactive property called weapon pickup. Then I would go to the status phase script and add a new subscription to this weapon pickup boolean. In this case, we no longer need to use the health change method. Instead, we can just say set face, weapon, plus get damage status and the health value. And because I don't have direct access to the current health of the player right here, I'm just gonna use the old health. Now, we need a way to trigger the weapon pickup. And obviously this is not the proper way, but just to make it quicker, I'm gonna make it happen when you tap the E key. Now, a couple fixes. First of all, we will set the weapon face only when the weapon pickup is true. So I will add this if statement here. Next, I will reset the weapon pickup value right after we set a new face. And now we're good to go. Let's see how this works. As expected, now the Doom Guy makes the Maniac face every time you tap the E key, and it will also work properly when your health value starts to go down. So that's all I've got for today. Thank you for watching, remember to download the project from GitHub, check out the code, I highly recommend that you try to take this and adapt it to your own game. And as always, if you need extra explanations or you want me to help you out, just let me know in the comment section or on Discord. Additionally, if you want to see a full video on how UniRx works or any other topic, just let me know, I'll try to get around to it. That's it, go make some games now.